Shut up and sit down. Hello and welcome back to the Tiki Sessions. As always, Stuart Cullen from Rawway Board Company and behind the bar, the great Ash. How's it going, buddy? I'm really good, thanks, man. I am stoked to have the legend that is Peter Stewart in the bar tonight. So we're going to talk about, uh, obviously, everything to do with Pete. He's a big figure in the North Coast and, uh, yeah, it's a privilege to have you in the bar, man. Tonight, I've made you one of your favourite drinks, which is a mojito. Obviously, you've got your Corona there. Amazing. I mean, the mojitos, obviously, with fresh lime, a little bit of fresh mint, a little bit of sugar, and um, we've got an edge drum in there, so you'll get bits of caramel and vanilla in there. Just top of a wee bit of soda. So yeah, stoked to have you on board, man. Awesome. And looking forward to having a chat with you. Super happy to be here, mate. Sweet. Yeah, Class. this this is probably one of my one of the interviews I'm most looking forward to, um, because as I said to you beforehand, you're probably one of the most happiest people I meet, and I'm going to ask <laughs> you about I'm going to ask you about that. Uh, during the interview, so good, the first man. thing I want to ask you about is what's the crack with the hat? Um, oh, so I have a, <laughs> a sh I shaved my head during lockdown there, uh, well, about two weeks ago, um, and the hair's just a mess. Like, so oh, I was in a uh, rush yeah, out of the house. Judge and any, this is coming oh. out of lockdown. Obviously, we're future proven things here, but yeah. look at this. <laughs> and so it, it's like a stage, something. it's a stage where it's between like half grown and like just a mess like well you see so, I, I went yeah. the other way i used lockdown as an excuse to go totally bald so yeah. then, because i was just like screw it it's all going and shave it down tight and uh uh my wife described me as i look like a thug my brother says i look like phil mitchell but listen i don't have a problem Man. people once said to me would you ever get hair implants and i was like no and they're like why not and i was like because then I'd have to think about what type of hairstyle I was going to have. With this, I don't have ah, to worry yeah. about it. It's you, great. you just get up and out you go, isn't exactly. it? Like, exactly. So, so I should have done that. Yeah, so listen, there, there's loads I want to talk to you about tonight. Um, there's your businesses, there's the sports that you're involved in. So cool. let, let's start with the water sports, okay? So yeah. your background is wakeboarding, okay? Yes. How did you get into the wakeboarding? Um, so a long time ago, uh, my brother used to do a lot of water skiing. Um, so he wa water skied kind of all over the place um, and then one night um, he was like look do you want to try it so I was like no worries we tried it um, and I was like oh it's good you know, water skiing's good like but it's just a bit boring or something you know it was like you know once you're on top of the water it was kind of like what else do you do like so um, we started looking um, at kind of other things you could do behind a boat and I remember being at Drumheglis one day and kind of looking and a guy Ross Armstrong came around the corner and he, yeah. he tried like a somersault and I was like oh what is that like so I uh, I my brother seen it and he was like right no worries and then on the sly he bought um like a wakeboard a, a full tilt stars and stripes like i remember it clear as day and then brought this video back and he's like so we sat up basically watched this video had the wakeboard sitting there and then from then really just stuck at it like so yeah it was oh, it was brilliant absolutely cool yeah I, I remember one of the first times i saw you in the water i was out in rob skelly's boat yes and we had some of our students with us because as you know i teach as well and uh, you were working for the same college as I was working for at the time. Yep. And you went past and did like a double backflip or something like that. And yeah. the students were like, oh my God, he's class. I was like, yeah, he's one of your lecturers. Like, you know what I mean? They're like, <laughs> no way. I was like, yeah, we're cool. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know, wakeboarding obviously started off as a hobby, but then you had a complete natural ability for it and you became really good at it and you started entering competitions. Um, how did how did you progress in those competitions at the start? Because you obviously ended up, you know, Irish champion, I believe, and on the British squad and stuff yeah. like that. So, um, so not I absolutely loved it from from the off. Uh, I don't know, just kind of really took to it. Like um, I don't know, like I was sort of playing other sports like rugby and stuff at the time, but with wakeboarding, it was kind of like this is just I absolutely loved it from the minute I tried it basically. Um, from there then, uh, we were doing a lot of wakeboarding with Rob at the age, we were doing a lot of wakeboarding um, myself, you know, with my brother, then my mum and dad actually, they bought a boat, like, um, and this is going back maybe like 98, possibly around then, like, um, so from then I just, I just used to sit with some mates, um, like Guy Farmer, um, Raheem, like a few of those kind of guys, Mark Gribben and stuff too, and we used to sit and just watch and sort of break down every trick in this video and we're like, right, today we're going to try that one, you know, so, so trial and error, um, and like, there was no real coaches and stuff, um, you know, like heavy wakeboard coaches yeah. in Ireland or whatever at that stage, so you were breaking these tricks down super slow-mo and then you had a trampoline in the back garden, so you were trying the tricks on the trampoline and then taking that to the water, but the problem was like, 
I could tell you now, like, I was probably concussed maybe 10 times at least trying it. Like, I remember my mum coming in the boat for the first time watching me try a somersault and my knee came up and hit me in the face, like, um, and I was concussed, I couldn't turn on the shower or anything when I got in. So, like, at the early stages it was trial and error, you know, you were just trying and, I, I guess, trying to get the tricks and all that kind of stuff. And you then all the boats for you at that time. People, you all taking turns. Or? It was my brother, or like oh, okay. you know, whoever um, would sort of bunch, drive. Bunch of mates just trying to figure oh, out. Was, how to drive a bunch of mates too, like, like so. I mean, there's but the thing is, health and safety was invented. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's exactly it. So I remember, like, we used to get these suits called barefoot suits. So the big sort of padded suits and we used to just think them all or stick them on and think we were invincible and it was like right let's go and try this and you know you're just getting splattered left right and center and um it all changed kind of pardon me whenever i did like the first competition we met a guy guy johnny crawford who was like a really good whiteboarder um and then he took me for like a wee coaching session and i, I landed my first flip like and then from then i, I just kind of got got better watched the videos um, went over to um, to England and then all the way through moved to America um, Whiteboard in Florida for got to a year like over there um, came third in the world over there basically wow, so that's awesome. that, that was cool like that was really th this cool. is one of the things that you know Ash and myself talk about loads is that and we've spoken to other guests about this is that coming from this small area in Northern Ireland there's so many people that have been on the world stage in their given sport or their yeah. given industry and you know we don't really shout about it and like i've known you probably 20 years and that's the yeah. first time i've ever heard you were third in the world that's like that's phenomenal yeah no thank you man and like over there it was a you know it was a big deal over there i suppose like but over here like the coverage because it, it's whiteboard and it's not really it's not seen as like a yeah. mainstream sport at all in ireland or you know any of that kind of stuff it's so funny um, man the time because like i yeah. always knew we went to school together uh -huh. and like, we knew of each other and whatever and then i remember mm. sitting down and this going off on a bit of a tangent this for me and being in the boat bars got a lot of nostalgia and a lot of like sort of oh even even kids, sitting here like class, yeah man. yeah like so many memories yeah but like the first time i was like I, i've heard of sturdy wakeboarding and then the first time i seen hammer time where we oh, yeah. John, where froggy, where <laughs> with john, john mullen and all yeah, yeah it was unbelievable and all yeah. those guys like there's uh -huh. like, we, we guy lewis he skated and all yeah. these guys yeah. it's like holy fuck and it was, oh, like, man, it was and just it was just amazing and then seeing I think your section had Muse playing. Like yeah, you, yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah. We watched that. I was at uni watching that with my mates. Like we were watching CKY. We put on Hammer Time. <laughs> and you, prob you probably had that and feeling that it's, although you knew Sturdy, it's like you're showing your mates at uni, and it's like, yeah, this guy's famous. I like know, you know, it's Sturdy oh, from, no. from school. Like, yeah, that was yeah. ahead of its time. Like even then, like I. Thought, oh, like, those videos were unbelievable. Like he was so good at editing as well. Like class, do you know, man. like so miles ahead of his time, and like. The way he put that together, and oh, I, do, I remember going to his house and like going through all the clips and like yeah. watching everybody, and some of the skating was like top notch as well. Like and I was trying to hope it out to have it in the back bar somewhere, like because I'm gonna get DVDs and stuff like old. Yeah, I have it, mate. I can, I can, I can get, get you. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's, it's happy it's, days. It's worth having yeah, here all yeah, yeah. So as well as coming third in uh, the world, which you know is nothing to be sniffed at. What other sort of titles have you had within Ireland and Britain? Um, and so it's like nine nine times Irish champion, like which is I was delighted with that. Like and then uh, like I've won the Europeans as well, so a European champion I suppose too. And then um, but the thing about wakeboarding is it's like that it's so good, you know, going to competitions, doing all that, like winning that's great, great fun, and all that kind of stuff. But it's a whole like see everybody who wakeboards or the the actual banter at competitions or like the team like irish team or the uk team going places is like those trips are stuff you will never forget so, like, so like, you're talking about banter okay yeah so tell us about the british squad and uh how you uh left the british squad oh, oh <laughs> uh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, well i can't go too too deep into that like but um i uh let's just say uh we we're at an event and stuff over there and uh, I I kind of had to go back to the Irish team. Like I don't <laughs> I don't really want to touch too much on it. Like, but um, there. Oh, I. So it's, as as well as your wakeboarding, and you know, like I say, I've seen you wakeboarding. Um, you know, and you're talking about the banter that comes with the squad and stuff like that. Obviously, a bunch of young people away for weekends, taking part in competitions as well. There's parties going on and stuff like that. Flat out, Did that yeah. party and ever get in the way of of the wakeboarding? Like oh. Um, Absolutely, like, <laughs> like uh, absolutely, like, um, hockey. Oh, you, you know, I used to deny. It, I suppose whenever I was younger, I was like, oh, you know, because there's times I went over 
mum and dad and stuff weren't there and it all, and say something would happen where you know I don't know like you wouldn't kind of finish where you thought you'd finish like um so you'd be like oh yeah yeah no just just didn't wipe that well and stuff you know but <laughs> really about, yeah. really deep down I you're going oh it was a late one last night <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. you know what I mean and kind of standing there shaking nearly on the jet I suppose and stuff so but that that side of it was brilliant as well you how could I put it you got so much out of that side too like it sounds stupid but even the people you met and like yeah. You know, even people you met at those parties, even now, I still have like really good relationships with, and some of them are like high up and like you know, say Fox clothing, motorsport clothing, yeah. like you know, so you're still chatting away to those guys, and they still remember all that back oh, in the yeah. day, and it's almost yeah. a good crack to look back on. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Like, so it, it, it's that sort of cliche of it's not just a sport, it's a way of life, it's a lifestyle, oh, and massively, hundred percent, yeah, is that yeah. massively? And just sorry, when you say that, like, like. So when I was in Florida at that time, that's when, you know, they said, like, do you want to stay here and sort of wakeboard or do you want to go home? And you just said about the North Coast growing up here and like all that kind of stuff. And it was an easy decision for me. Like, like America is great and all that kind of stuff. And obviously you could have had a go at trying to make something work with wakeboard and stuff out there. But see, I don't know, man, it's like, it's just a total different like way of life. And like, like people don't even walk or like, like it sounds stupid as well, but it's just, there's no... It's hard to explain, but back here you have like, I don't know, you've got like the beaches, you know, everything seems like it's like a, like everybody's friendly, I suppose. Yeah. It's a core kind of like. It's that whole community, community thing. Like, yeah. Like, I, I think like even personally, it's it's class to walk down the street in Portrush and see the same people and see the same and everybody's mm. happy, everybody takes the time. Like there's people, we've had discussions about like, Going down to the shops, it's not just a two minute exercise where you go down, you could meet five or six people and speak. Oh, easy, half yeah. an hour. easy. But like from a yeah. business point of view, like, collaborating and sharing sort of best practice without sounding too wanky like it's just getting all of us getting together and helping each other out and yeah. it's not like even competitors try and help each other out and I think from from my point of view you are somebody who's thrived as a young businessman and it's just been I think from Seriously. looking from the outside in you have such an amazing team like you have really good staff and oh, I just man. like how do you build a team That's, like that like that you trust dude implicitly? like <clears throat> so the staff are unbelievable like um you know even like Jake, John, Johnny, everybody like so so good um I would say it's like for me in my business like it was to try and corner off the key areas mm -hmm. you know like so we we got a person for that area but the right the right person and total specialist a well, total like specialist so it's like so you have like you know the pillars of the business are really the specialists for each each part but for me it had to be someone who's like relaxed easy to get on with like um not too not too business probably yeah. the best way to put it like it's funny not, man because like, like it's it's a it's a fit the talk about business if yeah. somebody fits like you have a team that are specialists but you could go and have a beer with them oh exactly that yeah. like you know and that's the way when the interviews and stuff i suppose were like happening when I say interviews, it was such a loose interview, like, yeah. I, I, for I, everybody. I, I, I can't but, picture you sat behind a desk no. in a suit going, okay, um, now tell me where you see yourself in five years. You I know? mean, that, that's it. But the thing is as well, like, um, oh, like you just have the experience, like, you know, from like working, say, I don't know, man, like 12, 13 years, whatever, in web design or whatever, you know kind of who will fit what, what mold, like, but they still have to have that side where, like you say, you could just go for a beer and stuff with them, you know, and it's, and it's natural and it's easy and it's like, it's an easy fit, like. Um, so I guess anybody we bring into number 79, um, obviously want them to be brilliant at what they do, but at the same time, be chilled out and, you know, I nice, from, from really. From my point of view, working with you guys, whenever I was at Skunk Works, and you guys did a lot of our work with the website, yeah. you guys, we knew you were specialists, but you could communicate in, in layman's terms where yeah. you could fully yeah. understand where we were going and how we were getting there. And yeah. every single guy within your, or girl within, within your organization made it easy for us. And it was, it was brilliant, man, so fair play. No, thank you. And like, you know, we, like, it's, it's great because we get that feedback a good bit. Do you know what I mean? Like as in, in terms of um, easy to deal with and that, that kind of stuff, um, easy to talk to. And even as stuff gets more, more technical, like, John and Jack stuff is pretty technical. It's advertising and marketing and figures and blah blah blah. Those guys can break that down like really easy for people, yeah. and it, it tends to tends to work really well. Um, a lot of times, some of the agencies, some of the people sorry we work with, um, would get like spreadsheets sent, but not a real nice easy explanation behind it. You know, so that's yeah, kind of other bits where. And there's an awful lot of jargon when it comes to your business where people can get into it in a big way and, and, and talking about semantics or SEO or whatever it is and like it can bamboozle a young 
sort of somebody oh. who's starting, who's got a good idea but needs somebody like you guys to come and in. There's, to there's, also, there's also companies out there that will use that to their advantage mm -hmm. to, to try and get jobs mm -hmm. by, like Ash says, talking a load of technical nonsense and you know pulling the wool over people's eyes. Whereas you know, I know whenever we were setting up Rawi, one of the first people we went and talked to was yourself. Yeah, um, yeah. Not because of your web, man, yeah. not because of your web design background, but because of your your fashion brand background. Um, and straight off, like I messaged Pete and says, "Do you mind having a chat?" And he's like, "Totally." Whereas there's a lot of people that turn around and say, oh no, I want to keep my information private. Yeah. And you were like, yeah, yeah, yeah go yeah, over yeah. to the house and have a chat. So yeah, 100%. That, that fashion brand's called Thongs. Yeah. And uh, tell us about Thongs. So, yeah, Thongs um, <laughs> Thongs was an idea brought about in a ski trip. So, uh, we were at, well, a snowboard trip. We were in France and uh, <laughs> we were in this hot tub and probably about three bottles of wine deep or Who's something. Like, by the way? Oh, there was... Because yeah, like we don't know what is so, here yet. Yeah, know, so. so, oh no, it was my wife. My <laughs> yeah. wife was there, Fiona. Right, like, so yeah. she was there, um, and then <coughs> a bunch me. of mates. We had like, a, there was a pile of people on that trip. Like, um, So we were in this, this hot tub, we were drinking away and just chatting away. And uh, anyway, it was like an icy walk to the, the villa place. And I was like, oh, like I'm only with flip flops here. You know, it'd be so handy just instead of walking across that snow on your feet. And this guy's like, this guy, Arn Wilson from Belfast, ages ago chatting and chatting about it and i was like do you know what man i think like i'll make a brand and i'll start a flip-flop company like literally just on off the cuff to him and i uh, i that's what happened so uh literally came up with a brand an idea got it manufactured in china um started selling the first bits through the website um and this is what what i was saying about like always always like how could you put it like you never know, like say with whiteboarding and stuff, when you're out at the party and stuff, you meet all these people. Well, it was the same with thongs for me. Like it was an idea and then doing it, I actually started meeting like so many people. So I met this, this crowd in Belfast and they were like, look, love your idea. I think it's brilliant. We think we could take it to like the next stage. So I um, got involved with them, started doing a bit of design work and stuff um, on thongs with them. So they were coming up with ideas and like, let's try and get it in here. Let's try and put it in here. So we got it into like a bunch of places in Dublin. Um, we got it in across the water. Uh, like we got it into Jersey, we got it into Dubai. We got it in loads of places, but very quickly for me, working with these guys as well, it became apparent like it's for a business like that, because I had a young family, like two yeah. young kids and stuff too. At that stage, I was like, man, like trying to, how could you put it? Trying to make really good money out of that business was a long term. Yeah thing like um and the payment terms from some of the bigger like we used to get orders in and be like oh look who's placed an order this is brilliant you know what i mean this is class flying um but it was like 90 90 days payment do you know what i mean so like you're paying for all that stock pro to probably land in. seal and return as well seal and return yeah, yeah. or well so, some of them yes some of them no but at the same time you were still paying for all that stock to land in from china the clearing bill to get it out of the port and then obviously you were then paying the shipping cost to get it there so you're out all this money before you know the stocks even hit hit them like and then it's 90 days payment from there it's just quarter of so, a year like you know it's yeah, a long man, time you're just you're looking at it going like you know if this scales up and scales up like you're a you're either going to need like massive investment to take it to that huge level um and give away a load of your company really to get it yeah. or b you kind of just drop it down a bit and just sell them on the website and yeah do it like that so that's that's what we went for in the end like um, i remember the time i was working in like a, a marketing agency at the time and the stuff that you were doing Sturdy, and i don't know whether it was intentional or what but like you were doing stuff where where, where have you left your thong print i don't know if you remember oh yeah that. on the bottom of the graphic no, like yeah. class like what you had yeah. done on that was like if it's a thong print on a beach take a photo of it upload it yeah and that was pioneering for like oh Instagram man it was or like whatever. It was. the thing i would say about it is it was brilliant and like um you know with that other agency that came on board with it too so anyway, that opened the doors there, and <clears throat> you know, like we, I came up with those ideas, and those guys were like, sort of like, oh, those, that's great ideas, and yeah. blah blah blah, and they got then got me involved as a designer, like for them basically. So you know, I started the Thongs business, but then Thongs got me introduced to these guys, and then these guys started employing me for something else. Do you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. So Thongs was going like on the other side, and then that's whenever I had number seventy nine going anyway in the background. It was just all freelance web stuff, like Soul Trader, blah blah blah. Um, and then I guess for there, like we were doing websites when they started coming on board for us as well. They were then sending websites to me, like to build for likes of Ormo, like Hovis, Honda, the list goes on and on and on. Like, oh, yeah. um, so we were like, right, we'll build all those. Obviously, we, um, at that time, we had to sign an NDA, valid for like 
a year, a couple of years, whatever. Um, so we were building these websites for those guys, but then that gave me experience with the bigger brands and then number 79 started to grow from there really, do you know? So but, but even, you know, you're sa saying there you had to sign NDAs, non-disclosure acts. Um, you know, that would be a relatively foreign thing for you to sign, I'm sure. Like, it was, you know, whenever you get something like that from maybe Honda or somebody like that, do you go, right, do I just put my signature on the bottom of this or do I need a lawyer to look at it? You oh know? yeah, like, so that's, that's what I'm saying. Like, um, you know, even say th you take thongs, like learning through that too, like um, we paid $900 uh, dollars once um, for like a trademark in Australia. What a waste of money, like, do you know what I mean? It's like, there's just, and it, it could, I could go on and on and on, like there's so much we did wrong with thongs, like, like we, uh, so there's, I'll get back to that in a minute, a second, but so there's the strap on the flip-flops. Every time you open a mold for a strap, it's $2,000, like, for each time you do it. Yeah. So we messed up, like, three times. Do you know what I mean? As in, like, and it wasn't for the sake of not, like, how could you put it? China saying, and China sending you something is a totally different thing. Like, it's so yeah. funny, it's, man, because like one, of the, one yeah. of the famous quotes from Honda is the, the, the chief exec of Honda. He says that in any success, it's 99% failure. Mm -hmm. But it's only because like, you, you have to learn from those mistakes. But if you're in this space where you can learn and you can evolve and develop, that's perfect. But it's fucking hard whenever you're... Oh, man. Yeah, especially like, if, you, if, you, you know, if, if you're out. firing six grand at something yeah. and man. you're not getting it right when and you're it's like, out. You know, but I was kind of lucky because we had those guys as well, obviously, that were involved <coughs> too. But, you know, there's multiple stories like that. Multiple stories. Like, so we, we built a POS system for the... Or not a POS, what am I talking about? Aye, yeah, a, P, a, a cardboard yeah, POS yeah. Yeah, for yeah, the yeah. display. Um, and we thought, this is brilliant. This is going to be class. And then after about six months of it being in a shop, when someone tried to move it, it was falling apart. Like, so you're replacing, yeah. pardon me, the POSs, and they were like... But they were really impactful. Oh, they were so they were cool, like, they were so really cool, cool, but it was like, you know, again, you're talking like, you know, X amount for that. And, and you have you to know, see, you know, you have to obviously balance that on how cool that looks to how many items is it going to help me sell, if you know what true. I mean. That, that's exactly it. So with that whole side of it, which was mad, and then I, it just... I it was it was like it was such a learning curve. That is the biggest thing. I know, I and you've like, got to take the positives out of it, man. Oh, like you've obviously taken the positives out of it, but it's do you know that, you revisit those things, it's hard. The hundred percent, the biggest thing I would say, honestly, is like for me, see, doing that, like the positives and stuff like that, unbelievable. I said I would do it. I, I did it. Like yeah. I was like, look, there's no way I'm not doing this, and that's why your man Aaron even messaged me like two, three years later, and he was like, no way. Like you know, <laughs> look at that. Like it's going, you know, thongs, blah blah. blah. I couldn't believe it. But um, the thing I would like about that as well is like, you know, if I hadn't have tried that, A, I wouldn't have met the guys from that agency, you know, B, like, I'd probably still be burning my head going, oh, I'd love a product brand to try and do yeah. something with a product yeah. brand, you know, so I would say nothing, like, if you think of something, do it, like, that, that, nothing's a missed opportunity. This is the whole like, point of this thing, yeah. really, like, to say to people, like, young, like, I don't know if, if young people are going to watch this or whatever, but... If you've got an idea, go for it and like give it oh. a blast. And if you, if you if you fall if it falls flat in its face, it doesn't learn matter. From it. Like yeah, exactly. you see, I, I I always refer to the film Sharknado. So oh yeah, like, right. So Sharknado is probably the worst film ever created. But it was a massive but success. Somebody pitched that film to a studio, and the studio went, "Yeah, okay." And that, oh, yeah. that film's made over like 150 million quid or something. Oh yeah, it's yeah. huge, and it's got four sequels and stuff like that. So I always say to to, to younger people that I'm working with. There's not a stupid idea in the world because if somebody's made Sharknado, you know, oh, anything can happen. Man, a hundred percent, like, hundred percent. So here's and Jody, you, you've like, you've got your businesses, you've got, you've got so much going on, you've got a wife, you've got two kids, and every time I meet you, you've always got time for people. You are, in my opinion, you are the epitome of the work-life balance. How do you do oh, it, man? No, cheers to it. Like, um, Cause you're, like sometimes I see you out surfing, I see you out, and you've seemed to find time for wakeboard and surfing, your family, your business. Do you know what I, like it's, um, I would say, how could you put it? It's having, like, having a, like a strong team, like that is the biggest thing. Like, people see the trust. team, people you trust. Like, you know, you could say to any, anybody in our team, like, oh, what about this or what about that? And, you know, it's, they, you just give, like, basically give them time to do the right job. Like, yeah. and then if they do the right job, then there's no one coming back to you. So yeah. it almost frees up your time. You can just do what you do. And like, um, I'd say I've, I've gotten a lot better at it of the years, as, as the years have went on. Like, yeah. um, <laughs> like there was a time where, you know, I can even think when Fiona was like, um, pregnant or whatever. And like, um, 
say we just had Amber and we were kind of going through a growth, like a, there was a big growth spurt, like we started to get a lot of clients over in the UK and we were starting to like pull sort of bigger um, B2B e-commerce stuff. And I remember just staying up loads of nights, like working away and working away. And then she was kind of like, look, um, you know, you need to try and like wind that, wind that in. Like, yeah. So since then, and that was going back down, which was two years ago. Since then, then that's been kind of my number one thought. I think like, I remember waking up one night and eat weirdly, because something was playing in my mind, I emailed you at like 3.30 in the morning, I got a reply at 3.42 or something. Aye. I was like, what are you asking? It's mental. Like, do you know, yeah. and it's like, but it, like now I've definitely got it, like as in, you know, like I've plenty of time to do, you know what, like if I want to go that work like balance? It's, I've, I think, it right. I've, 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 but yeah. I would say like it's all trial and error, like anybody. Do you, do you work at that, man? Because is it something, oh, it seems why? to come naturally to you, but. Like it, pro it might look that way and stuff, um, but no, you have to work at that. See, over years, like, like, and it's different for every business, I'm sure too. Like, and an understanding wife, but let's. Oh, why? Yeah. Oh, why? <laughs> like so let's, let's let's talk about Fiona and in, in particular your wedding photographs. Oh um, yeah. <laughs> so your wedding photographs for those of you that don't know, um, Fiona wakeboards as well. She does, yeah, she yeah. She does, and uh, Pete's wedding video photographs was Pete in a suit and his beautiful bride Fiona in her dress wakeboarding uh, in the river band. Yep. And those photographs went worldwide? They did, yeah, they did. Um, so they were in Daily Mail and they were in, oh, it's chaos like. And what yeah. was it planned? Did you do no, it to try no, and get not, that exposure? No, not at all, not at all. We did it um, as, again, it was like an idea. We were like, do you know, let's try it. Like, let's go out in the river. Um, I've done double whiteboarding before. Um, and we were like, do you know, what if, like, we'll come up with this idea. So we'll go and buy a wedding dress. And gum tree. So it wasn't her real. So it wasn't dress. a real one. That's no, all right. No. So I, I couldn't imagine my wife going, "Yeah, I'm gonna let you fire me in the river band in my wedding dress." Uh, like you know. <laughs> so it was thirty quid off uh, off some woman in Bangor. Like so, we went <laughs> up and picked it up, and then she put it on. Um, I got a suit, went in, um, and it was. I was lucky, like, cause I could wear a wet suit under my suit. Yeah. So I was warm, like, but she she had nothing on that. She was like not warm at all, and uh, so then took off. Um, yeah, basically just started doing flips and there's a guy, David Cavan, really good yeah, photographer. No like, yeah, yeah. Um, so he shot a bunch of shots from the boat and even that, like, when he was showing us them after, you know, in the boat, we were just like, what, those are yeah, top drawer. And um, I mean, it went proper, like worldwide. Like it was in like, well say Daily Mail, then Russia, there was a paper in Russia. No way, man. And they said, he proposed to her on the water. And I was like, how do you do that? Like, yeah. Do you know, how does that happen? Hey, will you marry Here, me? Uh, here's, here's the ring, like, do you know, and the wet yeah. God, um, that wee woman in Banger. She's oh, in wedding dress. Oh, she's just thinking, what the It's crazy. Doing? And it was in, like, Japan. And then I got a, a message from, like, one morning. It was in, like, a London subway newspaper. Wow. It was, like, it went loads of places. If you search it, it's, like, Class. yeah, it's, it's a lot of places. So, no, it was And then funny, there's, there's another really iconic photograph of you as well. And I think it's in Dublin. And you're probably the only person I can say, have you ever wakeboarded behind a car oh, on man. a river? Like That what was, was that unbelievable. And th right. This isn't a car in just like an inch of water. This is a car no, in the middle of the, the Liffey. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're wakeboarding mm. behind it. So the guy who owns Lego, and this is what I'm saying. Sorry, like, the guy that owns Lego. guy who owns Lego, his driver is the guy who brought this car over from, uh, so it's for a company called Miles Fuels. Um, they're Maxol. They do stuff with Maxol and that. And I got a random email one day and he was like, look, um, do you want to come down? We've got a water car and uh, you could do somersaults behind it or whatever. And I was like, look, 100%. Um, so anyway, like landed down and your man was there, the driver guy. And he's like, yeah, this is the boss's car. And I was like, oh, cool. Like, you know, who's the boss? And he's like, oh, it's blah, blah, blah from whatever owns Lego. And I was like, what? That's <laughs> unbelievable. And like, so anyway, chatting away and uh, the car, we put it in the water. And it's just amazing, like as soon as it hits the water, the wheels just fold up wow. and it turns into like a floating, like a boat basically. Yeah, yeah. Um, and from then it was easy, like you just took a rope onto the back of it, the same kind of thing. Like, Must so. be really interesting, you know, if you think about Pete's career with wakeboarding business and everything, you must have had some incredible phone calls and emails and, you know, oh, stu man. stuff made of dreams over the, you know, to, to have somebody randomly email you and go, you know, do you want to come down to Dublin and wakeboard behind a car on a river? It's like... Oh, do you have to sit there and process that and go, is this somebody taking the piss or, or you know? Do you know what you do, but then at the same time, like you almost, you do, pardon me, a little bit of research. Yeah. And you're like, oh, that person is well, who they are like. And you're like, oh, happy days. And straight back, like didn't even have to think twice about that one. It was like oh, brilliant. all over it. Thing about that though, that day, like I remember it like it was brilliant. Like we had to get out. Uh, so the tide was really low because there's a load of tunnels 
leading to the, the half penny bridge is it, or yeah. the penny bridge or whatever it's called yes. and uh, so there's a load of tunnels so we had to fly up there like super fast um, and then get some shots with that bridge in the background so I had to do that and then once that was done um, then we had to like you know wrap up and fly back down but we got like an extra session a day after as well where we're just kind of messing about and a lot of the photos from the day after are actually better from the because you're more relaxed. Aye, you know, from the original. Was, you know? was it at an event or were you literally going down the Liffey behind a car doing flips on a wakeboard and the general public were going, what the hell's going oh, on? Oh, no, it wasn't It wasn't an organised event. Like, people were stopping and they couldn't, like, I remember people shouting and stuff and being like, uh -huh. what is going on? Like, and it sounded like a car, so a boat is very <laughs> silent. Yeah, and, like, yeah. you know, this was like, what? Like, you know, it was proper car. Like, brilliant. you know, it was brilliant. And, um, the thing was, it it was used for an advertising campaign for that company, Miles. Like, so I don't know where where it went. Being honest, Brilliant. they didn't send me anything after it. Um, but that's all. That's all I know. Fantastic. So we're talking about emails and phone calls, and like I was talking to you about this the other day, man. Whenever I phoned you, and I was asking you, would you take part in this? And I think this. I hope this is your number. Otherwise, we'll get somebody weird. Just what a vast Pete to make sure. It's <laughs> oh, is this my voice? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I'll play it once more there. Wait, wait, wait you hear this. Um, I can't get this one. <laughs> so leave me a message, scares, but Right, so I, I, I rang you and in the middle of your voicemail you burst out laughing and you run businesses that deal with major international clients. Yep. And I said to you whenever I, I, I spoke to you about coming and doing this, I was like, Pete, this is just what I love about you because you're running a top class business, Jesus. but you're still sturdy. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it doesn't, matter. It, like, yeah, it doesn't yeah. matter if the owner of Lego's phoning you or somebody in the Honda marketing department. If you don't answer the phone, they're getting that voice message. <laughs> That's exactly it. Like, yeah. And see, see being honest, um, I was, I was going to change it, but then I was like, do you know what? If people don't like who you are for you, like, yeah. what, what's the point? Do you know what I mean? Like, so I was just like, I'm leaving it. And uh, no, it honestly, it brings out so many more laughs than it does anybody ever question it. Like, from what I know, do you yeah. know what I mean? So and, like, and it, ju it just totally sums me up. But one of the things that I've said it a few times tonight is that you're always so happy. Is that you naturally is that you 100 percent of the time or behind closed doors is there a down pete and i'm sure there is because not everybody can be happy the whole time how do you deal with the down times man? yeah yeah um biggest thing i would say is like i don't know man i just try and be positive like positive every day like like see you're a big I, crossfit fan aren't you i like see like crossfitting or running like exercise like if I can get running during the day, like say you do, there obviously is days where you have down days, like yeah. everybody does like, um, but if you can get running that day, like you're a hundred times better than you were before you had that run. Do you know what I mean? So I'm always trying to do that. Or um, like, I, from like, from the go in the morning, like just, just always be positive, like think positively, like see any negative stuff comes into your head, just shut it down, like, yeah. do you know, and just keep, for me anyway, that's what I do. I'm always like, look positive, positive, like, even in the worst situations and like, you know, even number 79's not always been plain sailing, you know, like yeah. so many ups and downs. So I'm from learning as well. Like, you know, we've taken on contracts, massive contracts and learned like through yeah. the contract, but obviously there's consequences in that contract from learning through it, um, you know, um, and possibly things like that. That was in like the younger days when we didn't have say such a good team we have now yeah. or whatever, but you know, stuff like that. Like I think just let the negatives sink down. I, now when I get up, I'm just like, look, positive, going to have a good day, you know, blah, 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 good week, whatever. And even during COVID and stuff, like, um, always look for the positives out of it. Like, even with COVID and stuff, you know, how could you put it? Um, so we had a lot of clients in England, Scotland, um, cafes, restaurants, you know, all over there. So when it started, we were always like, oh, man, like, what's going to happen to these clients, you know, there? Um, but we just diversified the business, kind of went more into software, um, went more into e-commerce, you know, because everybody wants to sell yeah. online yeah. Um, and then started getting like, do you know what, let's just push down that road. Do you know what I mean? And like, so things like that, but... That's been a huge recurring theme through all of these Tiki sessions, man. It's about, you know, people who are doing well have been able to diversify and yeah. be able to adapt and not just saying, um, we're screwed, we're, and just yeah. going down with a sinking ship. You, you have to, some, like, when you're so involved with your business and you're just like, 
we need to make this work. And I think it's a very North Coast thing as well. You know, yeah. it, it is, there's a, you know, like we're, we're speaking to Claire Johnson, for example, and, uh, uh-huh. you know, I asked Claire, she's obviously, as you know, in the bar trade, and that, that's been hit massively. Claire's lovely, yeah, and, yeah. And I said to Claire, was there ever a time that you thought about walking away? And before I finished it, she said no. Never. She's like, like never. She's yeah. like, I, no, this is what I do. And until like I have to walk away, I'm never walking away. And I think that's a great thing that comes out of the spirit of people, not just the North Coast and Northern Ireland as well, is that uh-huh. it's that grit and determination and fight to try and be the best that we can. And a lot of the times we do, and you're a prime example of this, Pete, and please take this the way it's meant, we punch above our weight. If yeah. you know what I mean, yeah. and, you know. Again, if you if you turned around and said, "There's a web design company just outside Coleraine that's creating websites for these huge companies," you'd be like, "No, there's not. It's mm-hmm. probably from London or Manchester or New York or wherever." But it's not. It's your company. No, th- I mean that. That's it. And the thing is, as well, like, <clears throat> so we do work for oh, multiple agencies. Like, chances are you've been on a website where someone else says they've done it, but we've built it. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like, it's. But that's what I'm saying, we, you diversify, so we've diversified into that market as well, so it's easy, we've done it for 10 agencies, so another one approaching us, or we approaching another agency, whatever, um, we've got everything in place now to be like, look, we've done this, this and this, that's it, it's that way. Yeah. Um, but the other thing I would say as well is like, just when you say that, like say, so say any of those businesses and stuff, you know, it's like, I'd say a lot of people from here have no fear in their life, so they'll just start something and be like, look, whatever because me personally i could not care really if i failed like i've always been like that it's always like put like let's try it do you know if it fails it fails like do you know like whenever it's like even a strange thing though isn't it because it's, it's trying to because like it's it's so difficult to put a pin on it to say like you learn from your mistakes basically and, and yeah unless you give it a blast and go for it you'll never know that's that is the biggest <clears throat> thing i would say as well like if you have something burning in your head like and you're like oh i must try it i must do it i must put it off till tomorrow whatever man 100 percent do it because like i said earlier like the doors it opens like that flip-flop company obviously was only flip-flops i was going to sell online but then obviously an agency got involved and they were dealing with reps and blah 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 and just when we're even talking about this there's a guy set up a company the other day who i met through the flip-flops and now he's like look um and he deals with major brands in the uk and he's like can you sort me out with marketing do you know what I mean? And I would never have met him yeah. if that hadn't have been yeah. starting flip flops. Do you know? So that's man, like. And I think that if, like one of the recurring themes, and obviously COVID's been horrendous in so many ways awful, as well globally. Yeah. But when you look at the positives, it's accelerated a lot of good things for a lot of people. Like for me, opening this tiki bar, it would Class, probably wouldn't man. have happened the next. Maybe hopefully it would have happened at some point in the line. But it's accelerated things, and for me, it's about bringing local people together in an area that has such huge nostalgic value in this area like we've yeah. all we've all be- drank beers in here yeah. oh i want to keep that going because it's yeah. sat derelict for three years and, and every, every single person that's come in for one of the tiki sessions the first thing they've done is they've looked around and gone oh god the memories i have in this bar like you know oh, and whenever you whenever you get opened you know everybody else that's going to come in it's going to be the same yeah. thing it's going to be you know I hate massively. And I, like, I think it's only because we all want each other to do well. Like, and that's a really beautiful time. thing. Like, as I uh-huh. said earlier, about competitors coming together and wanting people to do well. That's so true, though. Like, yeah. I can't wait until we're all sitting here and there's like, you know, the crew that we've all had oh, over, we've all man. drank over here over the years, and it'll be brilliant. Music it's on. The same, like so Johnny that works for you, Johnny. Lowe. Yeah, yeah. Um, like I taught Johnny years ago, and uh-huh. Johnny has his own clothing company. Yeah. Um, and whenever we were launching Rawway, Johnny was like, "Listen, if you need any help whatsoever, give me a shout." Class. And th- I don't think you would get that in many other places. I think people would be like, you know, nah. like me asking you for advice and stuff like that. I'd be like, no, that's my secret. I'm keeping that to myself. Yeah. You go and figure out yourself. But everyone's like, no, listen, there's enough. We, we, we want to see everybody succeed. 100%. 100%. Like, um, it's just the way it is up here, I think. Do you know what I mean? Like, I get it's political in any way. Like, it's not necessarily what them and the hill sort of like uh, promote like we are yeah. all out for each other but as up there it's got quite tribal and it's it's, mm-hmm. you know, it's keeping whatever for your own fold and that's why it feels like you're up here in the north coast you're in your wee bubble and we all want each other to do well man massively and that's why i was saying like see up here as well like it's it has that whole vibe about it like like Sweet. you know you want everybody anybody you speak to and stuff who's starting something you're like look you know if you need any help asked how do how do we you know push it on a bit or whatever and like hear you saying because you like i always think I, I had an opportunity to move to australia at one point and i, I sometimes wonder if i should have or what the quality of life would like be better and like florida for you must have been a oh, man. huge prospect man. Like, but 
yeah, so, up here, then obviously one. Like the way I always look at it is like, so I was 18, obviously wanted to wakeboard every day. See, after two months, like two months of living there and wakeboarding every day, I was like, man, this is just crap. Like, you see, the North Coast like, does have that mag magnetic pull. Yeah. Oh. You know, like nearly all of my mates, we all went to universities in different parts of the UK. We've all come back, yeah. you know, and everybody that I went, like I knew you from school and I knew your big brother and stuff like that. Everybody goes away, but they do come back here and it's oh, yeah. that pull back to the North Coast. Massively. And, you know, how, like I'd say hugely, but um, there's probably, you know, there's probably people who say have went away and found like a real good career or something over there and yeah, thought exactly. like this is brilliant. So there probably is that, that side, but from being there um, and in America, and I mentioned about people not walking, and it's just, it's one thing that's always stuck to me, like, I don't know, like you, you, like you said, Ash, you walk to the shop here, you meet five, six people, yeah. easy. In America, you don't walk, you drive through to get like a yeah. uh, pharmacy, drive yeah. through for drink, drive through whatever. It's like, you just don't, there's none, none of that interaction unless you're at somewhere like a camp or, that's you know, whatever, and you're chatting to them and stuff. So there was that side of it, and then I, it was just, Obviously, like the life, the parties and all that there were unbelievable, amazing. But, but there's only so long you could do. Coast. That's it, man. It and then you come back. That's, that's it. it. That's it. So you were you were talking about, you know, being totally willing to give information across to people that are starting up and stuff. So if you were able to give one piece of advice to a 16 year old teenager that had what they thought would be a stupid idea, but something that they were passionate about. Yeah. What would be your bit of advice about it? Oh, hundred percent do it, like massively, like get stuck in straight away is exactly it. Like, and I don't mean- Don't be scared if it cocks up. Don't, no, don't feel like, bad in your head. <clears throat> absolutely not. Like, see, if you worry about failure and stuff, that's, you will, I think, fail. If, you, yeah. if that's on your head the whole time, failure, failure, failure. I, th like, I think you can only ever learn to a big extent from failure. You know, oh yeah. Uh, you know, it's the same with like, the teaching. I always say, I don't mind if you make mistakes because uh -huh. you'll learn. And if you make a mistake, you hopefully won't do that again. If you do it a second time, you'll definitely not do it a third time. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Like I even think back. Um, so I was probably about eighteen, nineteen, <clears throat> and I started a business called UC 360. Right. <laughs> So this, that, it was Rings good, like it's it was, a, 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 a North Coast first boy band. So it was. here, that, that's it, that's <laughs> it. Like, so it was, uh, it was panel stitching software for the inside of houses. So like, you know, so we'd go into a house and we had a, it was myself and a, a mate, like, and we had a tripod and then a fisheye lens. Oh yeah, three sixty videos. We took like four, yeah. well, four photos, yeah. and then we stitched them together in this panel, and we did stuff for like. Um, We'll say Colin at Bob and Burt's before it was Bob yeah. Burt's. It was another, I can't remember the name, but it was a different cafe. Um, and then we did stuff for a few other people. But um, yeah, I mean, it was like, it never really just, it never really went anywhere. It didn't fail, it didn't succeed. It just never really went anywhere. But from doing that, <clears throat> you had to learn how to embed these things into a website. So I learned how to embed the, the 360s into a website. And then I was like, oh, this got me kind of into web design a wee bit. Do you know what I mean? And then I was like, oh, Right, maybe I should like, so I had booked into uni to do technology and design because I like drawing and stuff. And uh, in uni I seen there was a web design course and I was like, oh, I'm like eight months into this one. Um, how do I transfer to that? And then I got transferred onto the web design course, but I'd never seen the web design course. If I hadn't started the UC at 360. Yeah, so yeah. it's like a- Natural progression. Yeah. Of, yeah. <laughs> so biggest thing I would say is do it like- you know, also, did you not pick up work from Bob and Burst? Like, we did, yeah, know. and so that like was you, you wouldn't have had that that connection. connection yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like you know, it's mad. Totally. Like so, if you don't start something, you'll never have those connections. You'll never have the opportunity to meet those people. Blah blah blah. You know, like it sounds cl like cliche or whatever, but it's so true. Like that's it. And what's the future hold for you? Just oh man, number seventy nine. Um, keep keep growing. Really, that's it. We oh man. So we we've got a developer now in Plymouth. Um, so we're, we got an office over there in Plymouth and we're now starting to break into some areas over there. So want to try and grow that side of it. And then just before COVID and we were saying like negatives, positives, we had some class meetings lined up in Spain, um, a lot of e-commerce kind of meetings with an agency over there we were about to start work with and all that kind of stuff. Um, so rekindle that. As soon as this ends, get on a flight, rekindle all that and try and push into 
end of that area. Like, I really hope he's get huge, man. But please don't ever lose that work. Like, oh, yeah, and then, no, it's it's and, and never change your voicemail. Keep yeah, that's voicemail, it. <laughs> Always for years, for years. Like, that's yeah. It. Listen, Pete. Thanks so much for coming along to uh, Contiki tonight. Yeah, no um, worries. I'll be back loads. Definitely. That's the thing. Like, so yeah, can't wait. Can't wait. I'm totally. sure Ash and his team will 100 look after you and your Class, team whenever you come in. Thanks very much. Buddy. Awesome. Thank Cheers. you. Cheers, guys. Cheers, awesome. Thanks, Cheers.